game specifics. I look. I like to look at the research that kind of shows that what is potentially going on in, in the respective sports that I work with, whether it's soccer, volleyball, tennis. Most of the sand volleyball information that I've gotten over the last year is predominantly international and professional studies um, because uh, there's just not a lot of research right now on the collegiate game. So kind of take that with a grain of salt as we move forward. Um, the number of rallies, generally you can see the indoor game is going to have about 14 to 24 more rallies per set. Um, the length of the rallies overall are going to be between 6 and 11 seconds for both sports um, with the rallies for sand volleyball being uh, slightly shorter. The indoor game, the majority of the rallies are going to be less than 10 seconds and only about 10 percent are like 15 to, 20 to 45 seconds, so a little bit longer. And then the rest between the rallies is um, fairly similar for both sports. It's between 12 and 14 seconds on average, again ranging from 4 to 38 seconds. And the coverage areas, you know, you know that the court sizes are, are a little bit different, but um, in sand volleyball you can see that each student athlete is going to need to cover over twice as much square yardage than the indoor player. So the sport then naturally is going to require a little bit more mobility, a little bit more quickness and speed, um, what we call reactionary and perceptual ag agility. They're going to have to read a little bit more to cover that, that, same, that increased uh, area. And so this is the kind of information that I use when I'm planning my movement patterns that I use in the drills, the distances that I'm going to cover in those drills respective to those two supports, and how the court size is going to affect their energy systems that they use when they're training. The movement patterns for the indoor game, if, if you kind of look at both sports, at the, at the raw level of both games, they're going to have two complexes. They're going to both have a serve, a serve receive, a set, and an attack. And then a complex two would be kind of the counterattack, the block, the dig, the set, and the attack. And that's ideal. Of course, there's going to be variations, but in regard to the elements of the game, there, that's, that's the similarities. But when we break down the two games, um, we can look at a few different things. The, the jumping that's involved um, in this indoor game, 38% of the jumps are going to be attacks. And that's going to have your horizontal component where they're doing an approach, and the vertical component, which would be the jump. Um, the vertical component is going to entail the staggered two-foot takeoffs or one-foot slide takeoffs. Okay? And then block jumps, these are going to involve counter-movement vertical jumps. And this, these are not big squatting motions in the indoor game. It's more what I call a dip and a drive. Um, and these are also two-foot takeoffs. And, and then adding in that lateral component, too, because they're moving along the net. And then the landings, um, my question mark on there was sometimes coaches are teaching two foot landings or single leg landings. So that's one of those things that um, it's good for your strength and conditioning professional to know just so that they can um, prepare the athletes, for, especially for those one-legged landings because they're a little more unstable. And if they're not strong enough, we need to, to work on some um, hip and knee um, strengthening. In the sand game, the movement patterns, Again, remembering they both have the complex one and the complex two. It's the same skill set. But when we look at sand volleyball, the team itself is in um, offense 59% of the time. And 50% of those offensive movements are going to be placements. And 30, only about 34% are attacking. Um, and on the defensive side, about 41% of the time is on defense, where the majority of those are going to be defensive moves and in motion are like uh, they're actually contacting the ball while they're moving and then secondly after motion where they've moved into a position and then passed or set or, or touched the ball and equally um, it was 47% uh, was in motion and 20% were after motion and covering each. The blocking accounts for about 29% of the defensive movements. Uh, in the FIVB studies showed that there were, were most of the um, blocks were active blocks, 46% of them. 27% were shot blocks and 27% were fake blocks. I would guess um, that this is probably less in the college game and the junior game, but um, it's something to consider as the game progresses. 